Okay, let's try this again. Take two. <laughs> let's see if it's coming in now. Paul's filled up my bird feeder, so we've got birds all over the place out on the porch. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have missed y'all so much. We've had a two-week break. One, because I got really sick and it wasn't the flu. It was some kind of respiratory thing. And then this last week, our granddaughter, Nicole, um, was was inducted to the National Honor Society, so we were at that. Hey, my baby girl, I love you. Kiss all my babies for me. Is the broadcast clear? Our internet's been so sketchy, I haven't been able to tell if it's working or not. Let me know if it's not clear. But anyway, so that's why we have the two-week break. And in the, in those two weeks, I got sick. All of Haley's family got the flu, bless their hearts. They just really were struggling with it for a long time. But thankfully, everybody's read better, right, Haley Marie? Um, Sarah's kids and all got the flu. And Sarah didn't get sick, but the kids did. And then uh, now Aaron's got sickness but i think she got that respiratory thing that i had paul has not gotten anything praise the lord planting bushes oh good boy that wet ground is going to be good for you to plant those too so the last bible study we had um was on rebar i don't know if y'all remember that and i'm just going to hit the highlights of that i talked about how rebar is the iron bars that they insert when they're pouring concrete to strengthen that concrete even though the concrete is strong in itself um it needs that added structure and so we talked about rebar and what it was and and we talked about spiritual rebar the things in our life that we need to make sure are in play so that even if we're a strong Christian, we just need that extra um, that extra strength to keep us going when things are getting difficult. And, and you all know if you're born again Christian, you're, you're going to get hit. You're going to get t attacked. And so um, that's where the Holy Spirit led me on that Bible study. And, um, you know, I always feel really sad when things don't work out for me to get on and do Bible study on a Tuesday, but I know that that is the Lord's work too, and He knows that, you know, this is the time designated for our study together, and if something comes up and I can't do it, then I just believe that that's God's will, so I, I try really hard not to stress over that, but I always miss you guys, um, and especially two weeks in a row. I just really miss y'all, but we're going to get started today, and at, and I'm con <coughs> continuing on with the rebar Bible study. And I told y'all at the end of the last study um, that today we were going to talk about the types of assault that come against that concrete that, that rebar helps strengthen. And so, obviously, in our life... We have assaults coming against us. I mean, right now, so much is happening. We all know about the coronavirus, and we all know that there is a threat. Um, and I'll just repeat what I've heard the officials say. This is, a, this is a nothing thing. Unless you're an elderly person that has a compromised medical situation, um, the risk is extremely low. You know, it's not even really hitting children. It's just, it's, they said because of, it makes it hard to breathe when they get this virus. And so a person that's already struggling, 
uh, with respiratory problems may have a little bit higher chance of a difficulty, but the rest of us, it's not that big a deal. So as Christians, we don't have to panic to start with. Hey, Lisa, I love you. I miss you. Um, so for the born again Christian, things like this are not something we need to worry about. We just, we just need to trust God and move forward, right? Don't be hindered by stuff like this, but our world itself is being assaulted and we need to show as born again Christians, followers of Christ that we trust our God. No matter what happens, we trust our God, right? So today I'm going to talk about those two kind of assaults. And I've got my papers up here. So if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. And the two types, as I was studying rebar and studying the scripture about all that, um, and I'm, I'm bringing it back into concrete because that's, that's where that study began. The two types of assault on concrete is impact and wear impact and wear. So I'm going to talk about those two types of things in a spiritual sense. There's sudden and, oh, hey, Jen, love you, girl. There's assaults that come against the Christian, really any human that are, bam, just straight on assaults, hits that, that just hit you sometimes out of the blue. You're just totally not expecting it. Sudden impact. And then the other type of assault is where, where over time, conditions begin to wear against the structure. And in, your, in our case, our spiritual walk against us, just time begins to wear us down. And I'm going to look at a couple of examples of this and share with you some things that I found. And we're going to start with impact, an, an attack an impact, a hit, a blow that strikes against you. Again, maybe a sudden blow that you weren't expecting. And let's look at Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bow to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They con commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God. Don't you love the but gods? But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. You know, we have a real enemy. Now, we have to remind ourselves of the scripture that says our enemy is not flesh and blood, right? Our enemy is a spiritual enemy, no matter if it's, you know, if you were walking down the street and somebody physically attacked you, what it, it, it is more a spiritual attack than it is a physical attack, and we know that. Um, we know that it is whatever is in the heart or mind of that attacker that is our enemy. Um, and so as I was reading through this and, and I recognized, hey, Roberta, good to see you, girl. But as I was reading this I, and it was talking about how our enemy sets counsel against us. Um, their tongue, the bitterness, the things that are said against us, the, the deceptions. 
We've all been betrayed. I think every one of us, raise your hand. Have you ever felt betrayed by somebody that you either loved or trusted? Um, and sometimes somebody that you really don't even have much connection to at all just seems to set themselves against you. You know, when we read the Psalms, a lot of the Psalms were written by King David, but then there were other Psalms that we're really not sure who they were written by. But that's one reason I love the Psalms so much, because I can so relate to the things they talk about, the attacks. And, and Lord, we're just striving to do your will. Yes, Lord, we're making mistakes, but we really... In the depths of our heart, we're really striving to do what you want us to do, Lord. But, you know, we live in an evil world. We live in an evil world. Hey, sweet Robin, I love you. Um, this, this world hates anything good. I remember Barney the dinosaur. Do y'all remember Barney the purple dinosaur? I don't do dinosaurs with my kids. I never have. I just feel like it's, it's too... Uh, it's too evoking of a belief in evolution. I know that sounds silly, but that's me. Anyway, so I didn't like the dinosaur concept, but if you watched Barney the dinosaur, he was always just happy, just friendly and happy and singing a little song. There was nothing really contentious there, just happy, sugar sweet happy. And I'm telling you what, people would write the ugliest things about that character just ugly ugly stuff and I, I i became a defender of barney the dinosaur because i kept thinking there's nothing but sweet and gentle and good being portrayed but this world hates goodness so much that it just wants to destroy it wherever it's seen. And what a simplistic little explanation. But I'm telling you, you, if you aren't being attacked by somebody because you're trying to do right, I'd be very surprised. Even just a look. Have you ever just been trying to, you know, do, do what you're supposed to do and you turn around and look and somebody's looking at you with this, look on their face like they just ugh. it's the enemy assaulting the child of God for trying to strive to do what is right to be good to serve to show kindness to show love I can never rebuke a person if if you I see that their heart is to show love even people that I highly disagree with what they're saying, if I know the truth is they're just trying to show love, I can't, I can't get angry. I, I may get angry at the viewpoint because it's in error. It's a, a crooked viewpoint. But if that person's true heart really is to show love, we don't get angry at that. We, we may try to educate them on more information, but the devil hates goodness. He's going to attack it every time he can. The, the question is, how will we respond? Your enemy is not flesh. I mean, it, another human. Your enemy is the spiritual evil. So that is the one kind of, of assault, the impact, where something has been devised against you, against you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, right? The weapons that we use as a God-fearing Christian are not anger and bitterness and sniping at somebody and bad-talking somebody and spreading rumors and violence that's not the weapons we use or the defense that we use we need to be prepared for an attack of the enemy by knowing scripture by being prayed up by being connected with people in our holy of holies of our life that we know are going to build us up in the walk we don't need people who are encouraging us to be more sinful well why don't you just smack her why don't you just tell her off why don't you just 
Why don't you just turn it around on her? No, that's not how a Christian responds to ugliness. A Christian is prepared, stable, strong. And how did Jesus respond? I think only once or twice did he even speak back when he was being accused. The rest of the time he was silent, right? Sometimes silence is a great, great weapon. Maybe I need to do a Bible study on that. So, what's another type of impact assault? Well, it's sin and rebelliousness. Stubbornness. Proverbs 29.1 He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Did y'all ever hear when a person has a car wreck and they say you're supposed to relax. If you see you're about to hit somebody or hit an obstruction, try to just completely let your body go limp. Don't tense up. Don't grab the wheel and tense all your muscles. When you do that, there's more injury. If you can relax your muscles just for a split second, the injuries usually are less severe. Obviously, there's cases that it doesn't matter. It's just going to be bad. And to be honest, my brother, I have three brothers, three older brothers. Two of them walk with the Lord and love the Lord and, and excellent men. And one of them, not so much. He's not had a, um, he's not had a good life. And uh, when he was in his 20s, he was in a terrible car accident. He was drunk. And uh, I think the car rolled and rolled and rolled, and he almost died. But the doctor told my mother that one of the reasons he was not injured worse, now he was severely injured, but they said one of the reasons he was not injured worse was because he was so intoxicated that his body was just completely relaxed. He was so out of his head, he didn't even know to tense himself up. Does that make sense? And, you know, that has come into my mind so many times when, when tension starts building. For me to remind myself that my God is in control. I don't have to tense up. And, and, and my family knows I, that's a struggle. It's a struggle for me because my defenses rise up and I want to say, okay, what are we going to do about this? And I have to relax myself and relax my emotions. And, and this morning, um, two of our daughters had extreme tense situations occur. And, and this morning has been very stressful. But as I was talking to both of them, two totally different situations, both times I was able to say, look, you know you're God. You can take a deep breath, relax, and let the Lord take care of this. You do what you can do, but the rest of it is in God's hands. And that dealing with the impact assault of the enemy requires us, first of all, to be prepared. Instant in season, always be ready because you're prayed up. You, you have the word putting the word in you at all time, understanding who God is. But also, sometimes the greatest defense against an attack is just to take a deep breath and let God do what he does. It's just that sigh, that it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Our Stress, our fretting, our nervousness, our emotions are not going to fix the problem. They're not even going to ease the problem. They're just going to make it more difficult. And what we've got to do is remember, when there's an impact assault against you in the, in the spirit or even in the flesh, keep that in mind. Going back to our rebar Bible study, that those things that you are putting into your spiritual walk to strengthen are there to help you overcome the attack. Okay? 
Does that make sense, y'all? But that rebar is your walk with the Lord. It's your faith. It's your trust. It's your ability to worship in a storm. You know, you think of the apostles and they get thrown in the deepest, darkest dungeons. And, and those dungeons, those jails of that time period, the horror of those places of imprisonment is beyond our understanding. We, we just... The horror is so beyond us. You know, in our life, even if a person is thrown into prison here in the United States, it's like... It's like a resort compared to what these men had to deal with. And yet, they worshipped and they sang praises to the Lord, even to the point a jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And the angels came down and the doors were open. I mean, could you do that? Could you be sitting in the deepest, darkest place of your life and still rejoice not just singing worship out of rote. Not just because, oh yeah, I need to sing. That'll fix this. No, because that worship rises up within you. It's just natural. The same way the soldiers train and train and train to be ready for battle. You know, they go to basic training. They go through all of this stuff until it's just second nature to do this and do this and do this. It needs to just rise up within us, that worship, that trust, that faith, that understanding. It just needs to be there so much that we don't have to conjure it up. We don't have to work ourselves up into worship. It needs to be flowing. So when an attack comes, the first thing out of your mouth or in your thoughts shouldn't be a string of cuss words. Or, or just something you've always thought, oh, well, I knew that was coming. Have you ever said that? Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was coming. I was talking to one of the girls the other day about how our human nature just tends to want to strike back the minute somebody says something that's harsh or cruel instead of that gentleness coming out what is the mark of godliness in your life what is that mark of godliness is it because once a week you post some scripture is it because you go to church all the time now those are good but you ask yourself when you get down on your knees to pray father god what is the mark of godliness in my life when somebody looks at me, Father, what is it that they see? Do they automatically see you? Or do they see me with little adornments of you? You know, I always grieve when I see these ladies with their heavy makeup and all that piercing and, and all that stuff they wear. And I just, I grieve because they want to be beautiful. They want to be attractive and beautiful and desirable. And they don't even realize it's so got nothing to do with what makes you beautiful. Just grieves my heart. Grieves my heart. And I know it grieves the heart of God. But ask yourself, what's the thing that wells up within you? My pages print front and back again. That always gets me confused. Isaiah 30, 12 through 15. Isaiah 30, 12 through 15. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare it, 
so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. The last part of that verse is, and you would not. When the enemy comes, have you ever seen a retaining wall that so much water, it wasn't built properly, there was no way for there to be draining of water coming out, and the wall just starts pressing out, and it's pressing further and further, and you know the next rainfall that water's going to, that pressure's going to give, and that retaining wall is going to burst, and the whole thing's coming down? When we allow garbage to build up, the enemy knows what's the last little strike he has to do to, to cause all of that to flow, to bust out and destroy us. I, I, I sometimes think that it's like, how much more can she take? You ever thought that? The enemy, whether it's your own flesh or somebody else thinks, let's just do that, this and see if she blows up. One more little prick and see if that balloon pops. When we continue over and over to allow this world and the things of this world, the stresses, the strains, the deceitfulness, the, the um, cravings of this world to war with us all the time, all the time. Just, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, oh, I like that. Well, I like that. Well, God doesn't just like that, so I can have that. All of this junk piles up, piles up. It's like that retaining wall. You're trying to hold on, but all of this keeps coming at you. It's just assaulting you spiritually. Is there going to be a breaking point? Are you allowing this stuff to build up and build up and build up because you've not examined your wall and how you're dealing with these things? Putting it, you know, that old Scarlett O'Hara line, I'll just think about that tomorrow. You can't just think about that tomorrow when you're dealing in your walk with the Lord. You can't just not deal with it. When you just don't deal with it and you just keep things piling up and you say, oh, I'll just take care of that at some point. I'll just, I'll take care of it, but right now I don't have time. Make time. Ladies, you know, we're coming to the end of this whole thing. There's not going to be time later for you to get things right. Your life, if you profess Christ, you are a walking book. You are the walking word of God to a lost and dying world. And I know you've probably heard that a thousand times, but look, look at me. You are the walking word of God if you profess Christ. Doesn't matter how many things you post on Facebook. Doesn't matter if you have 10 stickers across the back of your car that says something about Jesus. Nope, doesn't matter if you wear crosses. I noticed one day on a thing on the news, they were talking about Madonna. And guess what? She never seems to be without a cross necklace. Have you noticed that? I'm amazed. I'm amazed. But a cross necklace or cross earrings with a little dove hanging down or bumper stickers, or Facebook posts, or all of that stuff is not going to keep you in the war, in the battle, in the attack. The more that you hold on, it's like, it's like a soldier dragging behind him all kinds of stuff. Dragging, dragging. When the attack comes, what's that soldier going to do? He's not going to be able to move and handle it. He's going to be drugged down so low he can't function, and he's going to get killed. As daughters of Jesus Christ, 
there's one thing that matters, and that is obedience and following Christ. Where, where are you not being strengthened in your walk? And I'll give you a little hint on that. Wherever you keep getting attacked, if there's like a certain type of thing that keeps coming against you, that keeps bringing you down, that's where you're weak. That's why the devil keeps assaulting you there. <coughs> now let that simmer because the Lord will reveal things to you. I know where my weaknesses are that I battle every single day. And I'm not a slave to sin because I'm born again. But there's still these temptations that come at me all the time. <coughs> temptations that I've got to battle and I've got to get victory. <coughs> Number three, compromise. Now we've got the sudden attack. We've got sin and rebellion. Now we're going to compromise. <coughs> Proverbs 6, 12 through 15. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, <coughs> Should, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy." Instant response, I'm not a naughty person. I'm not a wicked man. I don't winketh with my eye. I'm not any of that. That's good. That's good. That's good. However, if there's areas of our life where we indulge our flesh, you have to ask yourself, honestly. Now, I'll tell you, if anybody came at me and said I was a naughty person or a wicked woman, I would set them straight. But I have to look inside of me. Oh, Pramilia said, oh my goodness, I got deep. <laughs> yes. Hey, y'all pray about the YouTube thing because the last time I tried to download Paul's message, something weird's going on with the Facebook thing to download it. So y'all pray I can figure that out because I'm, I'm having trouble. But anyway, when we're talking about the attack of the enemy, if you are allowing compromise in your walk, that's an attack, and, and only you can determine if that's a problem, okay? Now, I'm going to go on to the second types of attack. This, this type I was talking about was the sudden impact. The next one is wear, W-E-A-R, wear, time, erosion, evaporation, boiling, cold, Corrosion, erosion. Now again, this all started with our discussion of rebar and concrete, that it's there to strengthen. It's there to strengthen even as circumstances cause wear on that concrete. Everything, good, bad, Christian, non-Christian, everything is affected to some degree by time, by the wear and tear of this life. Obviously, the older we get, our bodies get worn out. The stuff that we did to ourselves as young people causes damage in our old age. Just the aging of our cells and our body causes wear on our life, on our our physical, but struggling over and over and never getting victory in our spiritual walk can cause wearing down of your spirit. Now, let's just be honest. When you've gone through 
major, major stuff, you're strengthened, right? Oh, you know, horrible, horrible attacks of the enemy make you stronger. You either fail completely or you get stronger if you really love the Lord. You're, you're struggling forward. You're building your spiritual muscles. Big attacks sometimes are so much easier to handle than the little bitty ones. The little foxes spoil the vine. That grapevine, imagine a grapevine, a beautiful grapevine. Hurricane can blow through and that thing still be intact and doing fine. But some virus that's not even seen can come in there and wipe out a vineyard in a day. Little foxes, little bitty things are what hurts us the most. As Christians, it's those little tendrils of root that are still in us that we aren't dealing with that over time cause bitterness and rage and unforgiveness and just every evil thing, little bitty stuff. So, I want to read this quote I found by a man named Tom Roberts. It doesn't take a bombshell to destroy faith if faith is left unattended and unguarded. Faith is not an absolute in our life that once attained will never change or diminish. It must be constantly attended, nourished, strengthened, and added to. Faith must be constantly attended, nourished, strengthened, and added to. It's not just something that, oh, I've got faith, and that measure of faith you've got is going to do you through all of life's crisis. Nope. Faith is a living, breathing organism. And if you don't attend to it, if you don't think about it, if you don't pray over it, if you don't study the word to build your faith, if you don't have people of God that truly are of God around you talking and testifying and, and, and speaking the word of truth, your faith can get really low over time. And yeah, a major attack may happen and suddenly your faith, even if it's down really low, can start building. Because what, what is the thing that we all do as Christians when we get a sudden massive hit of the enemy? Oh, go get your Bible. I've got to, I've got to read my Bible. And then you open up and you got beget, 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 beget. Oh, I gotta call my friend. She, I gotta get her wisdom because she'll know. She'll know how to encourage me in this. And we talked about that at the last Bible study. I love Psalms because sometimes you don't have that friend that'll encourage you, and you have to encourage yourself. But all of that originates from that seed that you've got inside of you. And if you're not nourishing that seed on a regular basis, yeah, you may call your friend. And she may give you great words of advice, but you know what? At some point, you've got to hang up that phone and turn around and look at the situation again. If whatever words that friend is telling you is not confirming what's already inside of you, it's not going to last you long. You've got to attend to your walk, attend to your faith, study the scripture. I was sitting there this morning on Blue Letter Bible, and y'all know that I love Blue Letter Bible. If you don't know about Blue Letter Bible online, you need to you need to get on there. Every word, it's like a Strong's Concordance. You can put up any scripture or any word. It shows you the Greek or the Hebrew original text. It cross-references everywhere in the word of God that that word is. There's like all these commentaries you can link to. It's amazing. And y'all know I love Matthew Henry. But anyway, I got to reading on one of these passages of scripture what the commentary was on that. And I, I read scripture first. 
I don't read footnotes first. I don't read commentaries first. I read scripture first. But anyway, I got to reading his commentary, and he was very, um, ex I think it's called expository, where he pulls every scripture apart. I got so locked in to what he was saying. It was, it was a scripture in Ecclesiastes. I'm telling you, I had... I had probably 20 tabs open on my computer where I saw something he said and it made me link to something else and look at that. And Me and the Lord were having breakfast. We were just having breakfast together. He was feeding me. And he was just laying more and more on the table. He just said, you like that? Let me show you this. You, oh, oh, you like that part? Look, look at this. I want you to see this. And I had every dainty that he had this morning laid out before me. And, and I'm telling you, it was amazing. And then the devil came and attacked two of my kids. And they were texting me and we were having phone calls and I thought, Oh, I hate you, devil. I hate when you attack my kids. But I'm so thankful that my God had already prepared breakfast so that when my kids were struggling for a little while, I could offer them some of my breakfast. You know what I mean? But, but if you aren't having breakfast with the Lord, if you aren't digging for the meat in his word, if you aren't attending to your faith, you cannot help anyone else. If you're a mama with children, keep your faith healthy and strong so that you can help your children. If you're, if you're not married, there's other people in your life that you need to be built up so you can strengthen them. We've got to use the assault of the devil to strengthen our brethren. I don't like saying cistern because it sounds funny. Matthew 24, 12 through 13. And because wit iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Remember, these are the attacks of where, time, Incidents coming against us just wear us down. Don't let the love you have wax cold. Don't be hurt over and over again and allow that hurt to make you scarred inside. Just give it over to the Lord. And I, hey, I know about being hurt. I know about being hurt. And you may go through periods of time where you don't even want to speak to anybody. That's okay. You can step away for a quiet time. Guess what? Even Jesus stepped away for quiet. I think that's a beautiful example to us. When, when the time is there, you step away. Get off Facebook. Stop going around doing all this stuff. Just stay home. Focus on the Word. Don't stay home and have a Downton Abbey Marathon. Don't stay home to lick your wounds. Stay home to build your strength, to build your faith, to faith, to study the word. Cut that worship music on. Play it as you go through your day cleaning your house. Build your faith. James, oh, I stopped too quick. Matthew 24, 12 through 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. James 1, 3 through 4. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Don't pray for patience. Never pray for patience. But when trials come, when attacks come, when you feel yourself getting weak, understand <laughs> that the trying of your faith 
does work patience. When these things come against you, it is building you, it is strengthening you. And it will have a perfect work if you let it. Mark chapter four, three through nine. Are y'all still with me? Y'all are awfully quiet today with your commenting. Mark chapter four, three through nine. Now this is the parable of the sower, and I'm sure y'all have heard this a lot. But as I read this, think about the wear and tear that is a form of attack. Behold, there went a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Attack number one. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately sprang up because it had no depth of the earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root and it withered away. Attack number two. And some fell among thorns. Amen, Shelley. And some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit. Attack number three. And the other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to let hear, let him hear. Victory. Four seeds were sown. One bore fruit. The other three did not grow fully to fruition because of cares or situations where that seed was planted. As a minister of the gospel, which you all are if you're born again, all of you, bless your sweet. Hey, Permelia, I need you to message me your home address because I wanted to send you those things that we talked about a while back, those patterns. As a minister of the gospel, which you are if you're born again, because any time you speak the word of God to someone to lighten their load, to bring them peace, to draw them to Christ, you are ministering the word of God. I'm not talking about a stand behind the pulpit minister, which women should not be. It used to grieve me when I would give so much time word, encouragement, and I would see a sister in the Lord still falter and fall. And it, it would break me. It would break my heart, and I'd grieve, and I'd, God, what did I do wrong? Father, help me see where I made a mistake. And one time in those grieving sessions, the Lord showed me this scripture again. And he said, Angie, one out of four brought fruit. I have to tell you, that relieved me of so many tears I cannot express. You give and you want to help somebody. And I know somebody, one of you, somebody that's going to listen to this Bible study, this is going to give them peace. You cannot change another person's heart. That is not your job. The Lord doesn't require it. Jesus, our Messiah, could not change the determination of those hearts. One man that was completely with him all that time, Judas Iscariot, betrayed him. Jesus Christ, our Messiah, so please understand that you are not, no matter how much effort you put into it, no matter how many scriptures, perfect words, tears flow, you are not going to change anyone's heart. All you can do is present truth in love. It's all you can do. And then you have to just leave it to the Lord. 
And the Lord will woo that person. He will woo them and speak to their heart and whisper and bring situations into their life. But the Lord will not override their will. He allows us to choose. In our own life, we've got to think about these seeds that are sown because we're sowing seed into other people's life, but things are being sown into our life too. And as a, an attack of the wearing down because of the cares of this world, if you're not gaining victory in something over and over again, and like I said, I have things in my life, it is really hard, Sherry. Shelly, it, oh my goodness, it's so hard when it's your children. Uh, you know, you know. But when you think about this, are things not bearing fruit in your life in certain areas? Ask yourself, have you not prepared the soil of your heart to receive that truth and to receive that seed? Are you still, are you allowing things of this world to choke out the word of God? Are you using excuses? Why? That's not necessary. I don't have to do that. Well, my friend over here told me this, and she's just happy as she can be, so that's probably true. Let, let me tell y'all something, and I, I'm being as serious as I can be. When we stand before the Lord, the excuse that your friend told you something and you really believed her is not going to be a valid excuse. But Lord, my pastor told me this, and I believed him. <sighs> There's a lot of pastors who aren't going to be in eternity with us. Sorry, I know. That's heartbreaking. But you will answer for you and what you've done with Jesus, and I will answer for me. The wear and tear of time circumstances, cares of this world, hurts, frustrations, deceptive things that have been done, all of that is an attack against your spirit man. And the only way that you can combat that attack is to be focused, attentive, stay in the word, stay on your knees, worship the Lord, submit to what his word tells you, there's been a lot of junk going on about all these new revelations from God. I'm sorry, if it's not in the Word of God, if somebody comes to you and tells you they've got a revelation, God just revealed a new thing. Honey, I'd back up faster than you can imagine. If it's not in that Word of God and it cannot be confirmed by the Word of God, it's not of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. James 1.21 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You can't do that. Permelia said, I am a messenger of the good news. What people do with it is totally their own choice decision. Amen. 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 Be ready to give an answer if somebody asks you. If somebody was to walk up, you to, up to you tomorrow in the Piggly Wiggly and say, tell me what you believe, you need to be able to tell them. You, you, that should not shock you. And I'm going to tell you something. In these last days, if you are a born-again Christian and you're actually walking as a Christian and actually obeying the Word of God, expect people to come up and ask you what you believe. Because the junk that this world sets out there to make make people think, oh, this this will help me, I'll feel better, I'll... Things will be okay if I do this. All of it's got the hangover at the end. Whether it's 
feeding your flesh with romance novels while you sit on the beach or or go into movies or drinking or smoking or whatever it is. Whatever carnal thing that that the devil presents to you to help you feel better, it's got a hangover at the end. I don't know how else to put that. And time and wear and tear and cares of this world that continue to push us down, it your spirit may be still struggling to get through it, but your flesh is getting overwhelmed and your flesh just wants to feel better. It just wants to feel better. I just don't feel good. I think I'm going to go shopping. I need to go to the beach, a week on the beach in that sand, and I will feel like a new woman. Hey, I love the beach. I love to just physically feel good. But that's not going to get us through the attack of the enemy. Because when, when we constantly need a flesh answer to make us feel good, guess what? The attacks will keep coming because the enemy knows we will give into our flesh more. I remember a time when my friend... It's like every Sunday, well, every Saturday, one of her children would get sick. Just one, a stomach virus, coughing really bad, headaches, sprained ankle. Every Saturday, somebody in her family got sick or hurt. And, it, and she had missed church for like three months. And this was back before there was Facebook and Internet and all that. I know. There was a time. And we were talking on the phone one day. She started crying. She said, I, I haven't even been in church in months. And I was talking to her about it. And she was going through all the stuff that had happened. And I said, Donna, you're under attack. And she said, well, I know that. I said, no, 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 no. Think about it. Y'all were always better by Monday morning. But the devil attacks your family on Saturday, Friday or Saturday to the point where y'all are incapable of getting to church on Sunday. And by Monday morning, the, the problem's solved or over or fixed or healed or whatever. And she said, oh my. She said, I never even thought about that. I said, and I told her, her and her husband, I said, y'all need to y'all need to pray over your family. And I said, the next time something happens, go on to church. Sit in the back row by yourself if you have to. I said, but get to church. And you know what? They did that. They did it. And she st they started going. And I remember one time they were in church. And one of the kids started to throw up. And they ran him out the back door. It was fine. Got him out the back door, took care of him, brought him back in, held him while church service was going on. Didn't disrupt anything. And you know, it was like, it's like maybe two weeks later, that stopped completely. It's like all of a sudden, it just ended. There weren't, I mean, eventually somebody got sick again, but not the way it had been. When we stand up and, and say, no, no, we're not going to do this anymore. We are, we are going to be victorious. I'm not talking about name it and claim it stuff. I'm talking about standing on the word, no matter what the enemy is throwing at you and saying, I will not be moved. I will not let this force my flesh to desire things of this world just because I don't feel good or just because I'm not happy. I will stand and I will keep standing. That's when the victory comes because the Holy Spirit of God just wells up in you and strengthens you in ways you never even knew he would. Okay. We're going to have a part three. We're going to have a part three. Look, let me read this last one, Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. When the battle comes, you don't look at the onslaught. You look at the victory. Don't, don't imagine what's surrounding you. Don't focus on what's surrounding you. Look at the future. Look at the victory. Look at what God has promised you. I'm, I'm not talking about that modern um, faith movement where, you know, you just ignore everything. Obviously, you cannot ignore it with somebody in your family is at the end of their life or struggling with nightmare situations. You can't just say, oh, that's not really happening. God is in control. I didn't just have a car wreck. I'm okay. I'm still doing good. I'm not talking about that foolishness. And, I, and that's foolishness. I'm talking about when you are in the depths of this, you realizing that your victory is assured if you are walking in obedience. No matter what happens here, no matter what this world does, what anybody says, my God is still God and his word is still true. And I don't care if this person's over there screaming and cussing me out every day. My God is still true. My God is still true. He does not fail. I have made mistakes. I may be paying the consequences of my mistakes, but my God is still there, still faithful, still true. He doesn't lie. As long as we live in this world, we are going to struggle. We are going to have pain. We're going to have sorrow. But for the joy set before us, we can endure anything. And I hope that strengthens you today. I hope that that gives you one more piece of rebar in the spiritual concrete of your life. That one piece of rebar will strengthen you when you are getting attacked by the enemy when the rainstorms is coming and beating you down keep that remember that rebar my god is god my god is faithful for the joy set before me i'm going to endure whatever i have to endure because my eyes are set if they kill you it's okay. I know. I know. I, I mean, seriously. If you die, if you stop breathing and you die, it's okay. For the joy set before me, I will endure anything this world brings because my God is God. And I'm going to tell you, ladies, if we can ever get a picture of heaven, I think most of us, don't want to die because of our children, because of our husband, because of the people we love. We don't want them to hurt. But we can always remember this is a vapor. That eternity is where it's happening. That's where we're going. This is what this is the porch. This is the porch. No, this is just the front step. Eternity is the focus. We get so afraid. We get so caught up in all the garbage going on, the whirlwind of cares in this world. And it seems like it's just everything. Is, it's, you can't escape it. It's just all right there in your face. I understand. But eternity is where it's happening. That's the good stuff. That's the joy set before you. Endure this life. Be strong, be faithful, be the post that does not move, that strengthens everything connected. Okay, I love y'all. Next week, we are going to finish this up and we are going to talk about the aspects of the makeup of rebar and what it, what it affects in your life. And when I talk about that, it's going to be the, the things about worship and prayer and scripture 
and fellowship, all of those things and, and the aspects connected to this concept of rebar. And we're also going to cover the enemies of Israel because I think you'll be very interested. I know I was as I studied out the seven enemies in Canaan that came against the Hebrew children and their focus, how they attacked. I love y'all. Thank y'all for joining me. Oh, yo, Shauna ain't at the truth. She said that's easier than dealing with some sheep in their flesh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, praise God, Suzanne. She has been so much on my heart this morning. So much on my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you guys. I'll go back and read your comments in a minute. Amen. Amen, Permelia. I love you. I think about y'all a lot more than you realize. Your names come up to me in my spirit. Yeah, I just can't, I can't tell y'all how often you ladies are individually in my thoughts and in my prayers. I love you. Y'all pray that I can get YouTube to work. So it's not YouTube, actually. It's Facebook. The downloading of these FaceTime live things, they've done something different, and it's not, it's not straight going through. So pray for me. I love y'all. I don't know if it's raining there, but don't float away. Mwah.